So I want to welcome everybody here. I'm, I just have a quick presentation just on to bring people, to give a general uh, sort of overview of the disease. Um, I want to look, there are a lot of familiar faces in the, in the audience. Um, we, I think we have a really excellent program for you. We're going to cover various aspects of the disease this time. Well, maybe we'll have another symposium later and focus on specific areas more, more uh, intensely later. But today, just an overview of the overall disease. And I'll introduce some of these things in, in, in this talk. Um, let's see, first of all, I have to figure out how to get these things to move. All right. I'm not a good moderator if I don't know how to do this. Ah, OK. So the, um, is there a pointer? Here it is. So I, I just want people to understand, we're talking about melanoma today, of course. And we, there's, there's sort of three things. There's a primary tumor. This is where the melanoma starts. And the melanoma can start on the skin, or it can start in mucosal surfaces, or it can start behind the eye. Melanoma <coughs> is, a, is a disease of melanocytes. And you have melanocytes all over your body. I've had this talk. For those people who have seen me in the clinic, I've had this talk with you in the clinic on several occasions. Now, melanoma spreads in two ways. One is through lymphatic, so it can spread to regional lymph nodes. And usually, this is the way melanoma presents first. It usually presents with a primary tumor, almost never with metastatic disease, almost, almost always with a primary tumor. And then the first place it usually goes is to local lymph nodes. And so you interact with your dermatologist here and with a surgeon here to remove this disease. Now, Melanoma can spread simultaneously through the lymphatics, which means the regional lymph nodes, but also through the bloodstream to other areas of the body. And this is what makes the disease dangerous. It's when it spreads to other areas of the body, the skin, the, the lungs, the brain, the liver, other places, that this becomes a much harder disease to treat and can become deadly. And this is what we focus on a great deal here. Um, from the time from local spread or, or primary to the time of metastatic disease can be a few weeks to many, many years, up to 25 years. This is what the disease looks like. I can tell you that in my clinic, I don't think I've ever seen a primary lesion. So I, I, by the time people reach me, their disease has been treated by the dermatologist or by the plastic surgeon. And it's very unusual for me to ever see a primary lesion in the clinic. So I actually don't know what this looks like. This is what the dermatologists show me. And you'll hear more from them later today. And here's another primary lesion, and you can see that it's an irregular lesion with irregular borders, variation in colors. And again, it can start in the skin, mostly starts in the skin, but it can start behind the eye, it can start behind the nose, it can start in the vulva area, it can start in the anal rectal area, it can start in the bottoms of the hands and feet, or in the underneath the fingernails. And actually, those are some of the different diseases, actually, whether it starts in the skin or whether it starts in other places. Although it's called a melanoma, they all start from melanocytes. The biology of mel melanomas that start in the skin versus in other locations can be quite different. You'll hear more about that from Ruth. Um, I'm sure you'll hear from Dr. Arian that once a primary is found, is taken out, we do sentinel lymph node biopsies to find regional disease. This all involves surgery, and you'll hear more about that from, from Dr. Narayan, Dr. Arian. But the thing that we worry most about is when the disease eventually spreads through the bloodstream, and this is what we focus a great deal on in terms of overall treatment. This, these lesions here are, are metastasis to the lung, but it can go to many different places. In fact, it could go to anywhere in the body. It can go to the liver. This is a very large liver lesion here, and it can go to the brain. And this is one of the biggest medical, one of the biggest problems in, in treating melanoma is that uh, often, often, not always, but often, Patients with metastatic disease will develop disease in the brain. We have very good techniques to treat these lesions today. We do much better than we did in the past. We probably won't talk specifically about this, although Harriet may talk about it a bit in her talk. And Harriet has made this treatment of metastatic disease in the brain a major focus of her research here. Um, so what do we do here at Yale? Well, we have this immense research program, with, which Ruth will talk about, which involves Clinical research, and that's one of the things we focus on the most here, which is to treatment is not perfect, so we try and uh, bring in new drugs and new approaches to treatment of patients so that we can improve the standard of care. We have a very large patient care program. Dr. Stephen Arian is head of our melanoma program and coordinates the clinical care of patients all the way from initial entry into the system all the way to the treatment of metastatic disease. We have 
a large uh, uh, group that works together through a multidisciplinary tumor board. We talk together about how to treat patients, and this is coordinated with both uh, our research group and, and, and other groups in order to try and bring research ideas into the treatment of patients with melanoma. And you can see that we have a tissue bank, which is run by Ruth, bioinformatics programs, genetic and mouse models, tissue microarrays, a hard, very sophisticated approach to the research of uh, the, the biology and the treatment of melanoma. We have a lot of uh, collaborations with other institutions, and we even have career development where we try and bring young investigators into the program and get them focused on uh, melanoma. So, and just to a little bit of preview about what Ruth will talk about, this is an easy, this is what makes a cancer cell, this is from 2000, a diagram by Dr. Weinberg, all the different sort of biological processes that can go wrong that turn the normal cell into a cancer cell, and obviously we try and figure out what these biological processes are so we can target these processes specifically, um, more specifically, and, and uh, treat melanoma successfully. And this is an easy, um, this is from January of 2000. <laughs> I just didn't want you to think that we, we just, uh, uh, this is a wiring diagram of the cell, and uh, our job is to sort of figure out what goes wrong in melanoma. So over the last 10 years, we now know that there's a mutation in, in, uh, in BRAF right here. This mutation occurs in about 50% of patients with metastatic melanoma. There are drugs that are now approved that specifically target this mutation that can cause amazing responses in patients with metastatic melanoma. However, um, those, those approaches are not yet curative. So we need, uh, we, there's a lot more work, and so we need to figure out, for example, if we target this RAF and the tumor responds and then progresses, one of the major focus of Ruth's work is to figure out why the disease progresses and what, what else to target here in combination with a BRAF inhibitor in order to get better responses. We now know that there are mutations in receptor tyrosine kinase, so these are growth factor receptors at the surface of the cell. And in a very few patients with melanoma, there are mutations in CKIT, and we can give drugs that are commercially available that target CKIT that cause amazing responses, but again, are not cures. There are mutations in RAS. We still don't know how to, uh, uh, how to target this, and Ruth will show you that she's um, uh, sequenced, done DNA sequencing of many, many cell lines, and is now beginning to understand other pathways here that are affected in the melanoma cell that may be targetable in the future with uh, small molecule drugs. Um, this is an example of, and I'm just going to give you a couple of examples of patients. This is one patient that had a CKIP mutation. This is a PET scan, and you can see that this is a huge lesion in the stomach. This is a patient that came to us, could barely eat, in fact, couldn't eat, was very sick. Um, um, we put her on a CKIT inhibitor, and with just a little, this is within two months, you can see that this big mass, the uptake in this big mass is gone, and she actually did very well for a number of years um, before unfortunately developed resistance to these drugs and died of her disease. Now, the other um, approach which is really promising in melanoma, and another one of the major changes over the past few years, is that we've begun to understand not how immune responses against melanoma are formed in the body, and in fact, how immune responses are formed overall. And one of the things that we've learned is that there are, there's this interface between cells that present these, these, these antigens. This is the, the things that, that, that lymphocytes in your body recognize. Um, how these antigens are presented to the lymphocytes, which eventually are activated and go on to destroy the cancer. And what we've learned, and this is the key aspect, is that we learned that there are on signals for these lymphocytes and off signals for these lymphocytes. And for many years, we targeted the on signals. We tried to turn the lymphocytes on by sort of putting the, the foot on the accelerator. But what we've now learned is that perhaps the best way to activate these lymphocytes is not to do that, but to take the foot off the brake, to, to turn off the off signals. And that allows these T cells to become better activated to attack the tumor better. There are two, two uh, pathways that we're attacking. One is CTLA-4. Harriet will talk more about that. There's a drug now approved within the last year which cures, I think, about 8 to 10 percent of patients that we treat with metastatic melanoma with this drug. And there's another drug that we've been working on here at this institution, PD-1. Uh, the discoverer of this pathway is actually now here at Yale, Li Ping Cheng. And an antibody against PD-1 in our hands has caused remarkable responses, perhaps in about 25 or 30 percent of patients. So these, the, these pathways are quite promising, and right now we're doing a trial combining 
agents which block CTLA-4 with anti-PD-1, and we're hoping to see even better activity in the future. So again, the, there, there's real promise in, in, the, in these immunotherapies, and one of the things that we believe very strongly here is that immunotherapies, unlike the small molecules, may produce very durable long-term remissions, perhaps cures in some patients with metastatic melanoma, and Harriet will tell you more about that. So just two quick slides before I turn it over to Deepak Narayan. This is two, just an example. This is a patient who came to us in 2007 with multiple lung metastasis, was treated with two doses of Yervoy or ipilimumab. His uh, disease uh, uh, almost completely went away. Actually, this x-ray still looks like this. It's been five years now, four and a half years, and his disease has not progressed, and he's doing perfectly well and has gone back to his normal life. And here's another example. Um, of, of a patient that we treated, one of the first patients we treated with the anti-PD-1. Um, obviously, I can't tell you who this is, but um, um, this disease responded very well. Um, it's now been at least uh, three, three and a half years, somewhere along those lines. Um, um, without any disease progression, good regression, this is PET scan negative, and we're hoping this will be, we think this will be a permanent effect. Um, so. Um, we're very excited by the, um, the, the new approaches to treatment. We, we, we think we have an, a superb research program, and I hope you'll get to hear about all those things, including uh, genetics and, 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 and surgery for this disease over the course of the, uh, the coming day. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Dr. Narayan, who will talk about surgical treatment of the disease. Thanks, Deepak. Well, I'm just 